Focus. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome. You're with Decoding Business Growth. I'm Sumera Abdi. Now, there was a time in India when most people after their graduation applied for a job browsing through the situation vacant ads in the Times of India, Hindu, Hindustan Times, you name it. People who were not lucky there registered with the government-run employment exchange and life moved on. Then came the Gulf boom of the 70s and 80s. Manpower exports were the order of the day. Thousands of recruitment firms mushroomed all over the country. It was liberalization that changed India's economic landscape and recruitment became more refined and technology driven. The advent of the internet culture then saw hundreds of online recruitment portals like Nokri.com springing up. These portals provided hope not only to the millions of unemployed Indians but also to those who were seeking fresh pastures. But sadly, in all this recruitment drive, nobody, be it the government or the corporate sector, paid heed to the skill development needs of the people. That resulted in a huge shortfall of skilled staff in the country. According to the latest census data, only 4.69% of India's total workforce has undergone formal skill training, compared with 52% in the USA, 68% in the UK, 75% in Germany and 96% in South Korea. Clearly, India has a long way to go. But one man perhaps was ahead of the curve. He saw the opportunity in staffing as well as skilling. Manish Sabarwal set up team leads in 2002 and this company in little over a decade has emerged as India's largest manpower recruitment and staffing solutions company. But what makes this company different is that it went for backward integration by actually setting up India's first skills university in Vadodara called the Team Lee Skills University in 2014. Interestingly, the new government headed by the Modi Sarkar has just launched national skills mission. So here's a look at the Team Lee story and you'll know what separates the men from the boys. There is an old proverb, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Perhaps this saying has had a profound impact on the founders of Team Lees. So much so that their whole business foundation is built around it. The 13-year-old Team Lees, which has emerged as the country's largest manpower recruitment and staffing solutions company, offers services like temporary staffing, permanent recruitment, regulatory compliance, payroll processing and learning services. With over 1000 core employees, Team Lease caters to over 2500 corporate clients operating across verticals like BFSI, FMCG, consumer durables, retail, telecom, IT, BPO and ITES, and automobiles to name a few. What sets the company apart is the value chain it has captured right from imparting skills to people who approach them for job openings to fulfilling the industry's requirement with the right skill set. So how did it all start? Promoter Manish Sabarwal, after doing his MBA from Wharton, joined the Hyderabad-based Nagarjuna Group in 1990. A year later, when Nuprendra Rao left Nagarjuna to set up his own venture, Penar Group Sabharwal followed him. It was Rao who inspired young Sabharwal to be his own boss. Taking the cue, he, along with his college mate Ashok Reddy and schoolmate Mohit Gupta, floated India life with an initial investment of 5 lakh rupees. This firm set up to manage pension funds got into payroll and benefits administration. By 2001, it became the largest pension management fund in the country. But the competition was intense. So when Aon Hewitt offered to buy them out in 2001, they gladly gave in. With enough money in the pocket, the trio looked at the growth of India's roadmap and decided to bet big on the staffing business. Thus was born Team Lease Services, 
with an initial capital of 2.5 crore rupees in April 2002. Yeah, so we started India Life was a child of business school. India Life was my final project in 29, in 19 out of my 30 classes at Wharton. And I found my investors um, when I was there and we started India Life and we sold India Life to Hewitt in 2002. And from 02 to 04 they sentenced me to two years in Singapore. I ran Asia Pacific for Hewitt out of Singapore. But king of a small kingdom is still king. You know, once you work for yourself it's hard to work for somebody else. So we were looking around for the business opportunities and it became obvious that India's people's supply chain is broken and a large number of our clients of India Life started asking us for the services of a company like Team Lease. So we stepped back and looked that it, the globally the staffing industry is a very big industry but in India it was still a baby in diapers and there was a huge unexploited market which we said would be a great second venture for us. So the second venture is really a child of our first venture. Filling a vital gap in the market saw the company do very well. It boosted a turnover of 8 crore rupees in the first year and broke even by 2006. The company grew 100% year on year for the first six years. But then the recession struck the country and it had to bear the brunt. The placement dropped from 10,000 positions a month to 500 in 2008-2009. Well, 2008 was very painful. We lost almost 30-40% of our revenues because telecom and financial services cratered. But I think in retrospect, all these things, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, as Nietzsche used to say. And so to, we came out a company which was much more realistic. We realized we didn't have to have branches to do hiring across the country. We realized that maybe we should look at doing financial, uh, doing vocational training and thinking about repairing and preparing employees because we are rejecting 95% of the kids that came to us. So yes, I think I think it was a painful period, but in the end, Team Lease has come out a much stronger and a much more um, diverse company because of that crisis, yes. But the recession helped the management to do introspection. This brought to light their inefficiencies and flaws. For instance, they had to interview 100 people to hire just 5 candidates. This struck them as preposterous. After a lot of brainstorming sessions, Sabarwal and company figured out that the way forward was to get into vocational training. This would help solve two problems. Team Lease would now be able to convert more applicants into employees because it could train the candidates before they got hired. It would also diversify into a sector that was close to an inflection point. Team Lease was not the first one to spot this opportunity. But when they looked at the landscape, they found the players were fighting an impossible trinity – cost, scale and quality. Those who pursued scale and cost fell short of quality. Those who wanted to give quality at scale found the cost too prohibitive. To beat this, they acquired 25% stake in the Indian Institute of Job-Oriented Training founded by Devesh Srivastava in 2006. This acquisition helped them to gain immediate scale. Soon, they raised their stake to 75%. IIJT, which has over 70 learning centers across India, has trained over 2,524 students and provided placement opportunities to 2,000 of these students during the last six months. Foraying into skill developments has worked well for the company. Its revenues from skill and development have increased from a mere 13 lakh rupees in FY 2010 to 6.18 crore rupees in FY 2014. Likewise, its profits grew from 5.2 lakh rupees to 19.6 crore rupees. Overall, the turnover rose from 578.4 crore rupees to 1529.3 crore rupees during the same period. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18 Samira Abdi talks to Anup Bakshi of ICICI Securities to decode Team Lee's services success story. Stay tuned. Team Lee's 
Services has been seriously advocating for radical changes in labor laws as that has been stifling the growth of India Inc. Towards this, they have used various fora to drive home the message. Sumaira Abdi caught up with Anoop Bakshi of ICICI Securities to find out how an investment banker like him views this company. This week we're discussing a company called Team Lease. Now here's a company that has actually ventured into a sector or an area which not a lot of people have actually gone into before, which is skill development. So what is it that now sets this company apart? I mean, what's the advantage that they have garnered by being perhaps the first movers in this space? No, I think, uh, you know, while it might be a new concept in India, globally it's a very, very large concept. In fact, the uh, the large ones are really very, very large. You know, the market cap would be around level 11 and a half billion dollars. You know, essentially, uh, we have a issue, a challenge as well as an opportunity that you have, you know, employers who want to employ people. Okay, you have a labor pool and a talent pool which is not very skilled, one. And there is a geographical mismatch in the sense that most of the industries etc. predominantly are in the south and west. Mm. Uh, but you will have working population which is there in the north and east. Yeah. So there is a geographical mismatch, there is a skill mismatch. And there is also this issue about informal versus formal. Mm. So I think there is a very big opportunity in India uh, of doing this labor reform. Plus on top of it we have labor laws. Mm. Which sort of prevents people from becoming fully formal. Mm. So the cost goes up and all of it. And you don't have, uh, you know, flexibility around labor. So I think this company fills it up very well. Uh, so from an opportunity perspective, mm. you know, globally it's a very large opportunity. In India also it is becoming a very, very large opportunity. Uh, from an employment perspective, obviously the labor laws, mm. etc. And general formalization is happening. Mm. Uh, while it is happening on one side, we also see, uh, when we speak to our other corporate clients, manufacturing clients, uh, you know, real estate clients, uh, that skilling is a very big issue. So, while there is a lot of, uh, I'll say, employ, employment, but there is not enough employability yeah. on one hand, and there are enough number of people willing to pick up jobs, uh, but they don't have the skill set. Mm. So, I think there is a mismatch on which this company plays, and now this and many other companies, but, you know, Team Lease is obviously a very prominent company in this uh, space. Okay, but, you know, it's one thing to spot the opportunity, right? It's another thing to actually carry through success. Oh, yes. So, what is it that's making Team Lease tick? No, I think uh, the quality of management, very, very clearly, and uh, led very ably by Manish. Uh, quality of, and also ability to just mm. see through, round the bends as, see, because it's not just opportunity, you know, opportunity has to go hand in hand with execution. Mm. Because only opportunities, you know, many people can spot. I think what they have been able to do very well is, that they have been able to execute it very well. They have been able to figure out this whole supply chain, if I were to say, of, mm. of human capital. And they have been able to intervene successfully at the supply chain, both at the place where there is demand, uh, which is, you know, corporate manufacturing mm. facilities, etc., and supply. Mm. And they have been able to train it. And also, I must, you know, give credit to Manish particularly of, of bringing it to the forefront in mm. policy making, uh, making sure that the, the, this issue of labor, uh, which essentially is a very, very large issue as we know and you know today yeah. you know, is a very opportune time. We saw that you know Prime Minister also launched the uh, skill development. Mm. I think you know being the policy voice, uh, making sure that the policy agenda is also mm. pushed mm. and it is executed well and the mismatch of demand and supply both from a geographical perspective as well as from a skills perspective is something that you have to give credit to him that he has been a pioneer in this and, and executed it very well. Um, you know, you mentioned that labor laws in India are quite antiquated. Um, staffing is always anyways a sensitive issue. So what's the biggest advantage or the disadvantage that a company like Team Lease now faces as of today? No, let us look at it from a you know, uh, end client perspective. You know, if there is an end client, well, let's say the attrition is high. You know, you may think that attrition is high, how does it matter? But actually, attrition indeed converts itself mm. into margin erosion. You know, in real rupees terms, in margin erosion, because you have to again get a person, again train a person, etc., yeah. etc. Et you know, a, 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 a organization like mm. Team Lee essentially acts like a buffer. Uh, so, to that extent, you know, they are, they are margin accretive mm. uh, to those people. That is number one. Number two, you have a lot of uh, regulatory issues around formal mm. labor and formal talent pool. Mm. In the sense that you have to do the PF, you have to do all of it. Yeah. You know, and those are very, very draconian. You can't miss it. So, and, but 
it is not core that portion so managing human capital mm. is core mm. to the organization but managing payroll managing these statutory dues etc is not core mm. you know so this is also something that you know this yeah. this company does so essentially you know what is non core uh, mm -hmm. for that company becomes a core for this company and because they have got scale and size mm -hmm. essentially the cost of of mm -hmm. intermediation or reducing the volatility because because of buffering mm -hmm. is there so they lower that cost mm -hmm. secondly from a skill building perspective you know because they are catering to you know many companies within the whole sector etc so they can focus on a scaled skill building mm -hmm. which individual companies again have to spend individually yeah. to build that skill uh, and if there is attrition, then they have to again do that. So there are a couple of very distinct, you know, uh, uh, rupee advantage mm -hmm. that they are able to deliver to the client. Mm -hmm. Now, from a supply side of human capital, mm -hmm. fortunately, we have a situation where there is a lot of supply of human capital. They need to be skilled, so there is a mismatch. Mm -hmm. That is where the opportunity is. There is formalization where there is a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. And also, fact of the matter is that there is a big movement happening from. Uh, you know, farm to non-farm, mm. uh, which is also adding to the supply mm. of people. And if you ask any, any, I am saying mm. any uh, manufacturing, uh, any uh, real estate, uh, any IT, ITS on a higher mm. scale, you will see that, you know, one thing they always will tell you mm. that, you know, while we may have enough people to work for, we don't have enough skilled people to work mm. for. So, in light of that, the National Skill Development Program has also been launched now. What kind of an opportunity, uh, whether it's monetary or non-monetary, will it present specifically for Team Lease? People like Team Lease and such other mm. companies can play a very pivotal role in buffering mm. the supply and demand. Mm. So, when there is a national consciousness on skilling, you know, there will be a much greater consciousness from corporates also to make mm. sure that skilling is upgraded. Mm and that skilling plays an important role. So, I think now he will have many more mm. partners uh, in the process of scaling up. Mm. Because in this business, scaling up is also very important because at the end of it, it is a scale yeah. business. It's not just individual skill mm. business, it's a scale business. And so, I think this national consciousness that will come, government support that will come. Mm. And hopefully, I have seen that, you know, in many other sectors also, as national mm. consciousness come, I think the, the force that you require to move our policy, move our regulation, mm. getting in reform, becomes easier. Mr. Bhakti, thanks very much for Thank joining in and detailing all of this for us. Thank you very much. Well, that was Anup Bhakti's take on Team Lease. On that note, it's time for another short break. When we come back, we look at the road ahead for Team Lease services. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Over the last decade, Team Lease has emerged as a preferred service partner to well-known companies like Samsung India, LG Electronics, Emerson's Network, BASF India, Johnson & Johnson, Kuramandal International, l and Finance, Concord Motors, to name a few. This strong clientele list and its leadership position seems to have attracted private equity players to the company. Samira so Abdi spoke to Gopal Jain, managing partner of Gaja Capital, to understand why he invested in Team Lease. Gopal Jain, managing partner at Gaja Capital, now joins in. Mr. Jain, first the obvious question to you What is it that made you invest in Team Lease way back in 2010? Manish uh, Sabarwal and his team, the team at Team Lease and, and Gaja Capital, have a long history of working together. Um, I was part of the firm View Group, uh, which had backed uh, Manish Sabarwal and Ashok Reddy uh, in the previous Aftar. Um, together we created India Life and Pension Services, which grew into becoming Asia's largest payroll processing and benefits administration company, um, a company that we eventually uh, sold to Hewitt Associates. So there was a long track record, there was a long history of working together and in so many ways uh, Team Lease was born out of the experiences uh, of India Life and Pension Services. Uh, so there was prior credibility, um, currency that Manish uh, and his team enjoyed with us and we had seen them at work in India Life and Pension Services. We closely stayed involved in their new avatar, uh, the new venture at Team Lease which was born around 2002-2003 and um, so that was that was the basis on which we 
looked at investing in deem lease. Um, we have a focus on um, education, employability and employment at Gaja Capital as you know um, almost uh, more than 40% of our capital has been invested in this theme what we call um, the triple E theme education, employment, employability and uh, Team Lease was, uh, was a very attractive company to us because we had built a thesis it was the first, it's the first company which has the potential to be an end-to-end -end player in uh, education, em employability and employment. Okay, so what is it about this company and Mr. Sabarwal that singularly strikes you? Teamies is a fairly unique company. There are very few companies with which uh, you can really compare it. Um, most of Teamlease's competition and employment are multinational companies whose fortunes have waxed and waned over the years. So in that sense, um, it's a unique company, difficult to compare. It's also difficult to compare because, uh, as I said, it uniquely uh, straddles uh, education, employment and employability. And, and that is what is the most attractive aspect of the company. These are three very strong trends. In employment, as you know, we are seeing secular growth in staffing and uh, part of the growth is also coming from the transformation in the industry as unorganized gives way to organized. In employability, uh, we know that uh, we need more employable people in India. There is a massive demand for training and when it comes to education, we all are aware that uh, there's a massive deficit in higher education and these three parts of the business fit together. Uh, these three businesses have strong multi-year secular trends um, and given our focus on education, employment and employability, it therefore was a very good fit for us. Mr. Jan, thanks very much for speaking with us. Space program is a perfect example of scale, speed and skill. Under the new national policy for skill development unveiled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on July 15, the government has set a target of skilling 40.2 crore people by 2022. If one does a back of the envelope calculation at 2000 rupees per person, then it works out to an 80,000 crore rupee opportunity for team lease. In anticipation of the future growth, the promoters have already got their act together. They are getting ready to raise around 450 to 500 crore rupees via an IPO. The tremendous growth opportunity is reflected at the company's headquarters in Bengaluru, where the mood is upbeat. The management is working on a two-pronged strategy. At the front end, it is offering students a chance to go to the job market or work towards a degree by expanding its training institutes across India. While at the back end, it is tackling the impossible trinity, cost, scale and quality. This strategy, coupled with the new government's big push for skill development, should see Team Lease deliver a superlative performance for the next few years. Well, it really is an unusual success story and Manish Sabarwal is certainly laughing his way to the bank. So looking at his game plan, one wishes there were hundreds of Manish Sabarwals in the country who could certainly be making a big difference to our economic growth. On that thinking note, it's time for us to say goodbye. We'll see you again next week with another interesting story. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.